Hi everyone, welcome to Data Science in Everyday Life. Today I'm going to be talking about an interesting new framework called DSPY. Now, over the past year or so, uh, let's face it, a lot of us data scientists have become prompt engineers, right? Especially those of us who are using generative AI. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is to make prompts that can, you know, do various tasks, right? Um, Language-related tasks. So DSPY tries to take this whole prompting paradigm and recast it into uh, the good old programming or I would say more like a machine learning framework, right? Um, and so the, the idea is basically that uh, essentially you have uh, an initial prompt like here. Um, so in this case, the prompt might be answer the question below based on the certain context you have. Um, and then you feed in sort of the ground truth pairs. Uh, and this is very, you know, similar to uh, your, your label data. Um, one, once you free, uh, feed that into DSPY, you get a new final prompt. Um, and essentially you, uh, this final prompt is, is like, is trained. Um, and so what you've done is you've taken this feature set and labels um, and you've trained a model. And in this case, the model is uh, your prompt, right? So it's pretty cool. Um, if you think about it, essentially what we've been trying to do with prompting is we've been trying to have all these various rules um, to make the ideal prompt and to get you the right answer, right? And this, you can almost think of this as trying to fit uh, points. You know, the simplest example is like on a two-dimensional graph, you're trying to fit points by line and you're trying to do that by hand. That's what we're doing currently by prompt engineering by hand. And this aims to make it much more robust, much more systematic, much more scalable. Uh, and it has all kinds of cool implications. All right. Um, so what stemmed all of this and why did DSPY become you know so popular? You might have seen this, like a lot of blogs and YouTube videos talking about it. Well, it all comes down to um, some folks from VMware, um, and then subsequently, this IEEE article titled AI Prompt Engineering is Dead, right? So these people in this highlight are basically talking about research from, uh, from the research group at VMware. Um, and essentially what they found was that auto-tune prompts are doing really well. Um, and these auto-tune prompts were like really strange for humans to look at. But what they found was that these prompts actually did much better than uh, hand-tuned prompts, right? So um, according to them, no human should ever manually optimize prompts again. So I think this is a pretty broad claim. You know, uh, I would take it with a grain of salt if I hadn't looked at DSPY. But now let's take a look uh, at a real concrete example. Um, and so for this example, um, you know, I have this notebook uh, and I'll share a link to it. Um, so what you're going to do is you first install all the requirements um, and you, uh, you basically declare this turbo, which is sort of initializing this DSPY model. Uh, here I'm Git cloning this repository uh, where I have some data. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically build a prompt for extractive question and answering, right? Um, and if you think about it, models like BERT um, are really good, or Roberta are really good at extractive question answering. Um, models like GPT or other generative models uh, you know, they can do extractive question answering really well because they're really large language models. But uh, a priori, I wouldn't expect a prompt uh, to do so well, you know, unless it had the context. So in this case, this is the subjective Q&A data set. Um, and uh, I'm loading in the data set here. Uh, I had a previous blog done on extractive question answering and fine tuning. So I have a Git repo that I'm cloning, you know, that I have the data in. And as you can see, um, this is the answer, human answer span. So 
the answer is either the actual like extracted answer or it's this answer not found string, right? Um, so let's basically take this data set, um, create two sort of sub data sets, one with the answer being answer not found and one with the answer not being answer not found, right? So you have the answer in it. Um, and then as you can see, this is basically the data that I want to train the model in where you have the question. So in this case, who's the author of the series, the context, whether it be in her portrayal of a nerdy blah, blah, blah. And then the answer in this case is answer not found. And this one here is the series good and excellent. Um, um, the context has the relevant information and the target answer should be, uh, this show is outstanding, right? So what you need to do is then basically convert these um, question answering um, data into JSON format, and then you create a data set. So if you're familiar with Hugging Face and PyTorch formats, um, DSPY very much you know, lies in that sort of a formatting premise. And for what it's worth, I think that's pretty cool. Um, so here, what I'm doing is essentially, I'm just having eight examples, you know, four training examples, four testing, just like really simple stuff, right? Um, and so, you know, you wouldn't expect this model to like do really well, right? Because you're just training on what, four samples. Um, and let's look at the human prompt that me, um, the prompt that I made, right? So this is the prompt. You are an extractive question answerer. Answer the question from the context, only extracting sections from the text. Uh, make sure to answer only with the relevant passage sections. If, if the answer is not relevant, answer with the last word from the context, answer not found. So to fit this for the extractive question answering, you need to have this answer not found at the end. So that's a pretty cool technique. And I found that I actually need to tell this to the prompt to say like, hey, make sure you have answer not found, right? It's, it's in the context, make sure you use it. Because otherwise it would just tend to give you an answer um, and so this is non-trivial, right? So uh, starting from just a simple, very basic prompt from, from DSPY, which, uh, which you'll see right here. Um, let's see how you know, that goes and how, how that might change after a few, uh, after training, yeah. So um, next, what you do is you define a class, uh, basic question answering um, with two signatures. So. You know, this program, like every program has like a signature. So in this case, it's the question and the answer, you know, as simple as you get. Um, and then you can do a prediction. So generate answer based on the question um, and then the context here, um, which, which is like the relevant context, like the actual review. And then you can see here that um, basically this is the prompt answer the question with factoid answers, uh, follow the question format. So does this one good? Uh, it depends on personal preference. So it's not doing like a good job of like extractive question answering, right? Um, and then the other cool thing is that you can also add in a uh, chain of thought. So here you see, you can add the chain of thought basically the idea is to, to sort of ask the LLM, right? Let's reason through the answer before actually uh, giving the answer. Let's think about it a little bit. And this chain of thought method has been actually shown to really boost the performance uh, in prompt engineering. Okay. All right. So now let's let's actually try to to train this model, and I'm going to call it few shot here because. Ultimately, you'll see what it's going to do is it's going to take those examples from the training set as essentially as few shot and uh, and then that'll help give it the right context, right? Um, so in this clay case, we define a new class called gendered answer uh, with the context uh, and then the question uh, and then the answer. Um, after that, you need to define like the, the forward step, which this is like boilerplate PyTorch. Um, 
for for any model you need to have like the 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 forward um algorithm which in this case is uh, generating the answer from the relevant uh, information which is the context and then the question next we need to compile it or uh, train the model um for which uh, we use uh, a bootstrap few shot and in this case the metric is uh, the actual answer because you're you're doing an exact comparison between the question and the answer all right so you want to get the actual answer um and in this case it's like an exact match um now you can do you can have more complex metrics um like you can have llm as a judge that's that's a metric that you can have um you can you have some sort of like function or, uh what have you so that's pretty cool now okay so now that we've done this so we've actually trained the model uh so let's check it out and then the question that i want to ask is do you like avocados which i don't think will be in that data set right because this is something this is a data set about uh, reviews and you see that it actually does quite well do you like avocados in the question the answer is answer not fun right and if you see the context it's something about star wars right nothing to do about with avocados at least the last time i watched star wars i don't remember there being any avocados yeah um and so let's see how it did it right so let's see what the prompt is and that's again a neat feature that you can inspect the prompt quite easily um so in this case the prompt is answer questions with short factoid answers context question answer boom right context question answer answer not fun right so it's following this format and the other cool thing is it has this reasoning aspect let's think step by step in order to um you know produce the answer right um so in this case like it it walks through these various step by step reasonings and then finally it gets the right answer um right so i think that is like really cool um and i've written a blog about it and of course i'm going to link that in the comments as well right so again going back to this right my initial hypothesis was that dspy could be really good in academic settings because that's where it's been tested um but not so much in the industry where handcrafted prompts are the norm i i mean when i say the the norm you know you realize that chat gpt has been out for just like a hot minute right slightly longer than a year um and so if it's the norm it's not been the norm for too long uh but it's it's sort of one of those things that when chat gpt came out prompt engineering was like really hyped and people were selling prompts and all of that right um but this is really cool because um you know manual prompting is always prone to to errors it's just like trying to fit the best fit line by hand right um you know folks solved it 200 years ago uh by using um mathematical like numerical approximations for like linear uh functions and then you had all of these um nonlinear machine learning fitting models like random forest you know like logistic regression and all of that come out right um so maybe in a few years it might seem really silly that we were doing prompt engineering by hand because we are essentially we're trying to fit um all of these data sets that we have through getting the right prompt and the prompt has so many different features in it right um let's think about if you want to improve the quality of the prompt if you want to have security if you want to have guardrails you need to include all of this in your prompt um and what about like version controlling prompts you might have one prompt that does well and then in, in production it does fine um uh, customer data comes in and it starts doing horribly just because the data has drifted uh and now you need to have a new prompt but you need to sort of um do it in an automatic manner and like version control and figure out what the changes are right so all of these now start to become paradigms 
that are possible. Uh, DSPY, you know, it might not be the right platform for this. I'm not saying that like DSPY is like the next ChatGPT or something, um, or not really ChatGPT, but like the next you know big thing. But the thing is, there are so many other automated prompting algorithms uh, that are coming out, just like DSPY, and I think that this framework, there, there's something to it. Um, so it'll be really cool for me in the future um, if we're able to look at prompt engineering uh, in a very similar manner as how we look at standard uh, data science flows, like we're trying to fit the best model. Um, and that'll like enable us to get like really super good uh, at all the stuff. And ultimately, I think that is what's very important for these industry settings is to to get algorithms not like 80% or 90%, but the the real business value will come when it gets, you know, you're really pushing those uh, limits. Um, and that's where data science has proven to be super valuable. And I think uh, that's going to be uh, the state of things uh, going forward in prompt engineering and generative AI as well. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope this was useful. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe. And I will see you all very soon. Bye.